Hey, what is up, Sixers? It's Grief Drums back with another advanced map tips and tricks video. Today, we're going to be looking at the Velvet Shell DLC map coastline, taking a look at the best drone spots, kill holes, as well as a selection of some other cheeky tips that I really like using on this map. So grab your popcorn and let's get to it. Okay, so let's get straight to it. On the ground floor office, there's a drone spot by jumping up on top of the shelves. You can jump higher and higher by sort of pushing your drone out to the edge and getting up to the top. This gives a really good view of the room and it's fairly well hidden. On the other side of this same room, you can get up on top of the shelves. Now this is a little bit more obvious um, and it's not really a crazy drone spot, but it gives a good view of the room and you're out of line of sight of the enemy. So it's not a bad place to leave it to see for anyone rotating or if the objective is just behind in the blue bar. In a security room downstairs, you can get up on top of the shelves, then the TV, move on top of the servers, and this is perfect for spotting any Cavera players that are hiding or anyone rotating during the game. In the blue bar itself, unlike Skyscraper, you can jump up into the wine racking. From here, you can actually see the blue bar itself, and you can keep an eye out for anyone that is hiding in here. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is a perfect spot for roamers to hide. By smashing all of these green crates, you can actually just walk inside when crouched. All of your body is hidden, and it is just so cheeky. I've used this several times myself to good effect, so it's worth trying out. Onto the sunrise bar. In this room, you may notice that the roof tiles just above are actually not attached to the roof. So what you can do is by moving over to the left-hand side, you can jump up, turn your drone, and clip onto the wall, much like Hereford Base, then get up on top of the actual barricade itself. From there, by angling very slightly to the right, you can jump over on top of this thing. Now, because this is a false roof, you are really well hidden and can bring your drone out at any point in the game to have a look around. On the other side of the same room, you can do exactly the same thing. By jumping up on top of the bar, then up onto this bit, there's another section of false roof just over here. And there's also several other little bits that are hanging down. This gives you a really good view of the room, and it's something that I would definitely, definitely recommend using if you can get to there safely. In the kitchen, by jumping up on top of the kitchen counter, then up onto this shelf, you have to do it from quite a way back, otherwise you'll just overshoot the shelf. You can angle up onto the, uh, the shelf just above where the lights are. From there, you can get up on top of the fridge, and if you move far enough back on the fridge, it's very difficult for people to spot you, but you can move out and actually see what's going on in the kitchen. Just outside of the kitchen downstairs in the service entrance, there are several shelving units you can jump up onto, or alternatively up onto this fridge by going up onto the boxes and then on top of it. Now, this is a really good way to keep an eye out for people, because if they're defending the kitchen, they want to keep an eye on this room as well. In the toilet downstairs, this is a nice place for people like Cavera to try and hide. You can get up on top of the, uh, the light just above the toilet, and then you can move all around the top of the cubicles themselves. This is actually a place a lot of roamers seem to rotate through, so it's good to keep a drone in there just to keep an eye on them if you're dead, so other people on your team can get decent callouts. Moving on to the second floor now, we're going to start with the hooker room. Now in here, by going under the beds, there's a lot of pillows and other debris down here, so you're quite well hidden and can turn around and look at people's feet. Most people are looking up high for drones, so it's good to keep one under here, just so you can bring it out later on. The other side of this same room, you can jump up on top of the bar and up onto the shelves. You can then get up on top of this little fridge that's over in the corner. The only thing with this is you've got to be careful not to fall down the back of it, because it's wide open. But if you do, you can get back out. So it's not a bad place to hide your drone if you're going to be attacking this room. In the VIP lounge, there are loads of shelves over on the left-hand side. You can sort of use them as stairs to jump up to the very top level. From here, you can hide your drone and keep an eye on the room itself. The other drone spot in the VIP lounge is up on top of the TV. By going up on top of this little white cabinet in front of it, over onto the shelves, be careful not to break too much stuff, otherwise it gives you away, and then up onto the TV. Now, you are fairly exposed because of the white background behind you, but it gives you a good view nonetheless. Out in the hallway, much like on favelas, there are plants that look exactly the same. Um, you can jump up into these and it hides your drone pretty well. Most people aren't going to be looking inside of that plant. Instead, they're going to be looking down the hallway. In the bedroom or penthouse, whatever you want to call it, there's this little partition wall by going up onto that and then up onto the coat rack that's on the wall. You can go up on top of the cabinet itself, the wardrobe. From here, you can bring your drone out to have a good look around the room and you're fairly well hidden, but you can be shot through these bags. 
You can also go up on top of the fan where you're a little bit more exposed, but it's good for keeping an eye out behind the bed. On the other side of the same room, there is a cabinet here that you can jump up on top of. You can then get up on top of the mirror, although it is a little bit finicky. Um, from there, you can go up onto the TV. Now, you are a little bit exposed here, but I just wanted to show that you could do it before someone tries pointing it out to me. In the bathroom of the penthouse, you can go up onto the shelves. Now, you'll be amazed at how well hidden your drone is here. A lot of people just don't see it. I've used it quite a few times. And you get a reasonable view into that room to see who's peeking you. On the cool vibe stairs, or the blue stairs, whatever you want to call it, there's another pot plant at the top. By moving up onto the banister and then bringing yourself back just a little bit, angling all the way up to the roof, you can jump up into the plant. Now, this is a really good spot because most people are going to be looking down at the stairs, not up at the plant. You can tag people from here and they're not going to know where it's coming from. In the pool room, you can clip onto the sides, much like downstairs, and go up onto the shelves. You're fairly well hidden by the bottles and you can see down through the glass tables. You can't actually jump up onto these on the roof. I've tried it several ways and several times, but you just clip through them. In the aquarium, this is my favourite drone spot in the entire map, by going up into the right hand corner. This rock blocks your view, um, or it looks like it's blocking your view. It actually hides the drone really well, but you can still see a lot of the room. There's obviously nothing stopping you bringing it out and having a good look around and then hiding it again. And it's good for keeping an eye on that bar over in the corner, where a lot of people like to try and hunker down. Now you may or may not know that like favelas, on the roof of this map, there are these holes that you can throw drones down through. The only difference is on this map, you can also throw grenades. This bar in the aquarium is somewhere people like to try and hide, which is why I showed that drone spot earlier. They like to keep an eye on that double door. So what you can do is cook a grenade and just throw it down there. It's going to ruin their day and there's not a whole lot they can do about it. Yes, they could probably sit on a Jaeger ADS, but uh, to be completely honest, they've been temperamental at best just lately. So uh, probably not great. The cool thing about these is there's actually four of them up on the roof that I'm going to show you here. They all look down onto various different places around the map, uh, mostly on the second floor, but two of them happen to look down onto the stairs. Um, I'll show you the other side of that now. We've got one in this rock collection room with the guitars. There's one on the white stairs. There's one in the pool room that I've just showed you near the aquarium. And then there's the one over on the blue stairs with the cool vibe sign. Now, the cool thing about these is they work the other way for defenders. As Valkyrie, you can throw cameras up there and get a really cheeky view outside. Now, obviously, if you're sat on the camera, there is a blue light coming out of this drone vent. Um, but they are quite difficult to spot if you're standing reasonably close to them. Back to another few drone spots quickly. Out in the hallway, you can jump up on top of these boxes and then up into this. Now, you can glitch through the roof. It doesn't provide you any benefit at all as you're an attacker. The only people that's going to be up there is you. But it gives you a good view of the hallway. In the exterior of the center of the map, you can actually go out onto here, where a lot of people like to jump down onto. And because they use this to rotate, you can jump over onto this lip and then move all the way around into the corner just by hugging the wall. This gives you a really good line of sight to keep an eye on anyone rotating. And that's it for drones. Let's move on to actual tips and tricks. In the blue bar itself, by doing a little prep at the beginning of the round between here and the sunrise bar, there are loads of places you can do this on this map, but there are loads of awesome little routes that you can run and flank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple, um, but I'm thinking about putting a video together of each map and how you can do this. Um, say, for example, that someone is pushing you from this hallway and you need to flank them. By pre-preparing this window, you can go outside and in through the next one before you're even detected and they're not going to expect you to be coming from this way. On the second floor, this is a valve cam placement now. You see this little lip on the left hand side? By placing a camera just inside of here, no one can see it. They're going to be looking down the hallway, they're not going to be looking up there, and those little wooden beams block it from sight. However, the valve cam itself can see all the way down each side of the hallway. This is insane and so, so useful. If you're defending the blue bar downstairs, by moving up to the pool room, you can create this peak hole which looks down into the office area, uh, the entrance doorway from it. Now, obviously, you're not going to make it this big, but you can get a really good line of sight down onto that doorway. So anyone coming in, you're just going to wreck. As you can see, the bullets are landing here. And because of the roof and the blue bar, it makes it very, very difficult to spot it at first glance. 
Another handy flank and rotation you can do, which does actually get you spotted, is out of the double window of the penthouse. Now you do have long enough to get back inside in time on a slightly different rotation, but this particular one, when a lot of people push the double door, it's a handy way to jump up behind them. Now almost the whole of the second floor is destructible, you can shoot down through the floor. So by going into the bathroom downstairs, you can make full use of this. By shooting the roof here, and then turning around and opening the wall up just here, you can get a really good line of sight down from the penthouse onto the entrance to the service entrance. Anyone coming through that single door, you're going to get an awesome view on. Now, obviously, again, you're not going to make it this big, but you can get a really good view, especially if you put barbed wire just inside of that door, you're going to wreck them. Anyone coming through is going to be looking forward, maybe to the left. They're not going to see this until it's too late for them. Another epic spot that I love to use on this one is by coming up into the theatre and opening to the right of the television. You can do it on the left as well. Um, you can actually see the front door, the main double door. A lot of people, because they still don't really know this map, surprisingly, they like to come and uh, try and push this door because it's an easy place for them to recognise. So uh, it's good to keep an eye on. Alternatively, in the penthouse, you can open up this section, which gives you a good line of sight down onto the, uh, the service entrance again. As people start stacking up outside of the kitchen just before they try and make their final push, it's handy to pick a couple of them up. The other option is going into the pool room. You get a line of sight down into the office by opening up just in front of this double window. Or alternatively, you get a really good line of sight down onto the single window of the blue bar. Anyone pushing from the ruins is going to be looking into the room. They're not going to see you directly above them until it's too late. If anyone gets too close to that window, their day is over. Back up to the hooker room now. When people are attacking it from this specific way, they come up onto this balcony and there's not a lot of places for them to go. There's only one entrance they can go in from. And they're fairly limited. In the room just below it in the sunrise bar, there is this tiny little entrance area. If you break this down previously, you can jump out of here, come up the stairs, and out of nowhere be lighting them up. This works especially well if you've got a valve cam outside and you can see who's out there and what they're doing. When defending the hooker room on the second floor, by breaking open the floor here, obviously not with sledge because you're going to be a defender, you can go down to the ground floor below, and it's this section of roofing just here. I'm just going to move around so you can see exactly where it is um, in relation to everything else. But by breaking open this section of the roof here, you can shoot directly onto that window. When people are pushing the kitchen window, they always seem to come to this bit. Now, opening the roof just above them, you get an incredible line of sight. Now, I know you can clearly see it here. I've made an absolutely massive hole, so it's really obvious. Just to show you the kind of line of sight that you get. But you can get a really cheeky view down onto anyone pushing that window. In front of this door, just over here in the VIP lounge as well, you can shotgun open the floor or, you know, use a 50 cal or something like that to get a view down onto this doorway. By placing barbed wire in the kitchen, um, it's going to slow anyone coming down from that service entrance. When people are pushing into the hooker room, attackers like to hunker down behind this for a bit of cover. Now, you cannot punch it, but you can shoot through it. So if someone's hiding down behind it, throw a few rounds into it, and I think you'll be surprised at how many people you actually get. I've seen loads of Ash players storm into this room, hide down behind there before they drone on again. So put a couple of rounds in it. As people push into the service entrance, no one seems to check behind this desk. I don't know why. Um, it's a really good hiding spot, especially for people like Kavera players and stuff like that. It's... Um, Something that can easily, easily be cleared out with a drone, but no one seems to do it. So it's worth a try if you're playing Cavera. Another really cheeky Cavera spot is in the security room. Now, as you can see, my legs clip through the wall here or through the cabinet itself, and no one can see you. This is a really, really good spot. You can just wait for people to push in, and before they know it, someone's flanking them from behind and wrecked all of them. It's a really good spot. All you've got to do is quite literally lie down, crawl in there, and move backwards. Now, you want your legs to be behind you, not in front of you. And you've also got to be a little bit careful about clipping out of the side of it on the left of you. But uh, as you can see, really cheeky spot. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully it'll give you some cool ideas for this map and ways to defend and attack. But if you've got any awesome tips or tricks that I've missed out, please let me know down in the comments below. If you did enjoy it, hit that thumbs up button. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe for all things Rainbow Six as well as Ghost Recon. And until next time, guys, stay reckless and relentless. So